Hey you guys, welcome back for our daily practice questions. You know, as always, I like to get into my introduction and disclaimer before starting into our questions for today. So for those of you who are familiar with me, hey y'all. For those of you who are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome you guys. I am Dr. Brittany Weinstock. I am a family nurse practitioner and I'm the founder and CEO of The Nursing Studio. I provide resources, tools, courses, review books, and videos to assist nurses as well as nurse practitioners with being successful on boards as well as in practice. Y'all, I've been doing this since 2015, assisting nurses and nurse practitioners internationally, and we have a 99% pass rate on all of our courses and a 100% pass rate on our one-on-one -on -one sessions since 2015. Now, I always like to give the disclaimer and reminder that we know there's no absolutes in medicine. We treat our patients on a patient by patient basis, right? But any other questions that I provide are based on the guidelines that are currently being tested on the ANCC and AAMP exam. You know, I always go and I, I, I research and I follow and I know the blueprint. I provide y'all with the blueprint and I'm always going to tell y'all what is currently being tested. Now, if I am teaching on things that we currently do in practice, I will always say that because you know that varies from what is currently being um, tested on exams. As you know, with uh, the new exam updates and the changes, there's about a three to five year difference, you know, when we actually update those exams. So there's going to be some variance in what we currently do in practice. So I will always say that so there's no confusion, okay? All right, you guys, with that being said, let's get into question number one. All right, question number one for today states, the nurse practitioner and MP student are discussing complicated and uncomplicated UTIs. All of the following fall into the complicated UTI category, except is it A, females, B, pregnant women, C, elderly, or D, males? I don't know why that says that. It should say males, but D, is males. Take a moment and tell me what you got in the comments. All right, you guys, you know, I always recommend reading the stem of the question first to ensure that you're answering what is even being asked of you. When you're on board, I know you just want to go through and read the question. I know you know the right thing to do. But here, please just trust me and take the moment and read that stem first, okay? So that you can slow down, make sure you understand what's being asked, and then look at the scenario so that you're not making mistakes, so that you're not getting so caught up in that long paragraph and formulating your own storyline, read the stem first, please. Trust me. All right, so the stem of the question here states, all of the following fall into the complicated UTI category except, and here, don't forget those keywords, except, so we're looking for what does not fall into the complicated UTI category, right? Is it A, females, B, pregnant women, C, the elderly, or D, males? Um, so the answer is A, females, because with uncomplicated UTIs, that's typically your females who have the, uh, the typical UTI presentation like dysuria, frequency, you know, um, and that they haven't had any history or issues with UTIs. They haven't been treated on antibiotics recently. Now for our complicated UTIs, think of the scenario, think of the um, anatomy. Our pregnant women uh, are considered complicated. Elderly are considered complicated. Males are considered complicated because of anatomy purposes. Elderly, you know, thinking about how they metabolize. So with this, our complicated uh, categories, and this is just the, the easy um, breakdown, but the complicated ones, we treat for seven to 10 days. Our uncomplicated, we treat for three days, okay? All right, question number two. The nurse practitioner is reviewing the patient's hepatitis B panel results. The HBSAG is positive. The anti-HBS is negative. The anti-HBC IgM is positive. The anti-HBC IgG is negative. Based on these results, how should the nurse practitioner diagnose? Is it A, acute hepatitis B? Is it B, chronic hepatitis B? Is it C, immunity? Or is it D, vaccinated? Take a moment and tell me what you got in the comments. All right, you guys, so the similar question states, based on these results, how should the nurse practitioner diagnose? So, you know, if it's asking for a diagnosis, we need to run it back and see what the assessment shows us, right? How do they present? What are we seeing here? So we know that we're reviewing 
a hepatitis B panel, right? So the HBSAG is positive. That's our surface antigen, right? So that's positive. That's letting us know that they have hepatitis B, right? The anti-HBS is negative. So that's letting us know that they do not have immunity or any vaccination, right? So you can eliminate the C and D here. And, you know, I always tell y'all when you're looking at a hep B um, panel, look at that HBSAG, which is your surface antigen, and then look at your anti-HBS for your antibodies, right? Look at those two first. That's going to give you the story right off the top, right? Because if it's positive for the surface antigen, SB, HBSAG, that means they have it. If it's positive for the anti-HBS, that means they have antibodies, right? All right. So here they have hepatitis B, some, some format, right? Because the surface antigen is positive. Now we're looking at the IgG and IgM. Now, the core IgM is positive here and the IgG is negative. So positive IgM means they have it right now, the min at this minute. You know, they say think M for at this minute. And so it is A, acute hepatitis B. Um, IgG is the chronic phase. So that was positive. We would say it was chronic, right? But your best answer is A, acute hepatitis B. And I just want to give you a quick rundown because I feel like we get so mixed up in it. it the presentation makes it appear um, overwhelming when it's really not. You just need to know the, the things to pay attention to and eliminate the rest for testing purposes, okay? So with the hepatitis B panel, again, that hepatitis, that HBSAG, the surface antigen, if that is positive, the virus is present, okay? If it's positive, they have it. They got the virus, okay? If the anti-HBS, the surface antibody, is positive. They are vaccinated or have some type of immunity or they have recovered from the infection, okay? With immunity, okay? Vaccinated or they have the immunity and it's a chronic, um, it's chronic and they have the recovery, okay? So when you think anti, think of antibodies. If it's positive, they have antibodies for some reason, right? So look at those two first so that you're able to look at it. Now it gets to uh, talking about the anti-HBC, the HBEAG. You don't really need to go that deep into that. When you, the anti-HBC is the core. Only thing we want to know for the core for testing purposes is IgM and IgG so we can know if they have it now or if it's chronic, right? Because that anti-HBC, the core alone, really doesn't tell us anything about immunity. It's just more so letting us know that they have been affected at some point and they commonly just use this to... Um, for like the blood bank to screen for donors. They're just trying to see if there's ever been any trace there. So that's what that is typically utilized for. So don't get so hung up on that. Don't get the alphabet soup and get yourself worked up and get it wrong. Look at what you need, take what you need and go, right? They say eat uh, eat the meat, throw away the bones, right? And then the HBEAG, you'll see that sometimes. And that's just talking about the viral protein. And that's just made from the actual virus and it's released from the infection into the liver. So it's just really detecting how infected the patient is, right? So if it's positive, they consider that like very infectious. But again, for testing purposes and to quickly be able to identify whether they have it or do not, if they are immune, if you um, if it's acute or chronic, that's what you really need to quickly identify and know for testing purposes and um, when you are initially practicing on an office level, right? Look at your HBSAG, your surface antigen. Look at your anti-HBS, your antibodies. Oh, if they have the surface antigen, they're positive here, they have the virus. If they're positive for antibodies, they have antibodies either from vaccination or immunity, right? IgM, if positive, is acute. IgG, if positive, is chronic. That's what you need to know, okay? All right, and then lastly, question number three. The nurse practitioner and MP student are discussing Rogam as they have a patient that is RH negative. What is the appropriate time to administer Rogam to the patient? Is it A, at 12 weeks, B, 28 weeks and within 72 hours after delivery, 
C, 14 weeks and within 72 hours after, after delivery, or D, at 20 weeks. Take a moment and tell me what you got in the comments. All right, you guys, stem the question states, what is the appropriate time to administer Rogam to the patient? So when do we administer Rogam? Remember, we give Rogam to our RH negative mothers to protect them and their child in the event that the baby may be RH positive, right? And so with that being said, you just simply need to know when we, we give this. And this is a knowledge-based question. Your answer here is B, you want to give it around 28 weeks and then within 72 hours after mom has delivered, okay? So B, 28 weeks and within 72 hours after delivery. All right, you guys, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, I am loving all of your feedback. Congratulations, you guys. I've been seeing your passing stories, and y'all have no idea how happy that makes me. Um, congratulations to Nurse I'm just going to say Nurse Cole, um, on your passing of your boards. Thank you for letting me know. I wish you much um, success on your journey. Go shine your light out here, girl. We are so proud of you. Um, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, you guys, and make sure you meet me back here. We will continue our daily practice questions and continue on to exam success, right? And if you need us at the nursing studio for any of our review materials, we have ebooks. An ebook review that once purchased, you have instant access along with a paperback um, option with the review book. There are system, they're broken down by system. It has interactive sections by system. There are um, quick med lists by system. There are uh, practice questions at the end. There's 175 practice questions to prepare you for a standard test. Um, it's also broken down by systems with rationales, uh, and that's, again, at the end. So the way that the book is designed, it's for you to review, do the interaction, and then move to the next system. So, And then the interaction is broken down into levels so that you're able to tell us how this presents, tell us how we diagnose, tell us how we treat. You know the way I, I teach in that format. That's the way is for you to study. It's the short and sweet version that you can quickly look at those in bullet points. If you need more detail, this isn't the particular book because this is more of a quick review to hit the highlights, okay? And then test your knowledge and build on these things, all right? So a true study source on the go type um, material. So you can get it in the ebook or the paperback. We have self-paced review that is um, broken down by system. Also, you have a downloadable workbook. We have quizzes associated with it, and you can do it as many times as you want. It's me teaching you through uh, the content as you work along and then quizzing yourself afterwards. And then we also offer one-on-one -on -one sessions. So one-on-one -on -one sessions are completely designed based off of your needs. So if you have a particular weakness and you just want to do a session to work through that weakness to make it a strength, that's an option. And we also uh, do, our most common one is a custom package. So in the event that you may have been unsuccessful and you're looking at how to get back at it, right? You know, to redesign and restructure how to study and to... A lot of the time in between what you're looking for to say, so say you want to do it for four weeks, say you want to do it for two weeks, it's designed in that fashion to work you through and to bring you from unsuccessful to successful with us working alongside with you um, with a structured study plan and making sure that you're building and getting strong and are actually prepared to retest, okay? So if you need any of our services, be sure to reach out to the nursing studio at 803-400-6000. 6864. You can give us a call. You can shoot us an email. Um, you can shoot us a text message at that number, or you can shoot us an email at the nursing studio, the number one at gmail.com. And also, um, you can also do an inquiry on our website. The links to the book, the ebook, and the paperback option is in the bio of this channel along with the website so that you can easily access that. But I always recommend if you just simply don't know just give us a call or shoot us an email. We're happy to answer the questions to kind of help and guide you through what you need. But as always, you guys, make sure you meet me back here. Happy studying. Bye, y'all.